The first week we looked at it, we looked at chapter one. Uh, last week we looked at chapter two. And this week we're looking at chapter 18. <laughs> and Angela's going to come and read for us the verses. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. potter's house and there I will give you my message so I went down to the potter's house and saw him working at the wheel but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands so the potter's formed it into another pot shaping it as it seemed best to him then the word of the Lord came to me O house of Israel can I not do with you as the potter does declares the Lord. Like the clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. Right. Okay. Thanks, Angela. You remember one of the things I said about Jeremiah and God was that God usually spoke to Jeremiah in pictures and things that happened, okay? And so in chapter one, we saw about an almond branch and a big, uh, a big pot, boiling pot, okay? Um, in chapter two, last week, we thought about the way God spoke through a, uh, a description of a spring of living water and uh, a cistern, a, 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 a hole dug in the ground, okay, to contain water, and one that was broken. And so we come this morning to perhaps the most famous, maybe, uh, picture that God uses to teach through Jeremiah. And that that is on this occasion, he sends him down to the potter's house to watch what's going on. And there Jeremiah sees a lump of clay. I guess we've all had a go at this at some stage, haven't we? Or at the very least we've seen it, but we've probably had a go at it. So uh, a lump, when you're a potter, a lump of clay, uh, as we saw a bit in the video there, uh, it's, it's wet, it's sticky, it's uh, messy, uh, it's cold actually because of the way you're using it and you need it to be, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not really anything is it, it's just there, it's just a lump, okay, a lump. And of course you know the point that I'm going to make about this lump, don't you? Who does this lump stand for? You and me. Okay? We are this lump. This worth nothing, <laughs> ugly, <laughs> damp lump. Okay? God says is like us. Not that you look like that this morning. You've put on a wrapping this morning. We've all dressed up this morning. Because it's not a description particularly about us anyway physically. It's more a description about our character and our nature. And God is saying that human nature, human character is like a lump of clay. Not that worth that much. Not particularly attractive. Blah. It's just there. It's just there. But of course, the reality is that as Christians, 
we are in a particular place as a lump. I'm a lump, and you're a lump as a Christian. That belongs to God. We've committed our lives to him. We've given ourselves to him. And so what's God done with the lump that we are? Has he put us on a shelf and said, hey, you stay there, you lump. And I'll come back and get you one day. As he wrapped us up and made us a little bit attractive on the outside as a lump and said, oh, you'll be a bit better to look at as a lump on the shelf like that. No, he hasn't, has he? As a lump, every one of us is in the same place. And that place is in the hands of the potter. That's where we are. That's where we are. Jesus himself said, no one can ever snatch you out of his hands. As a Christian, we are in God's hands. Just like, the, just as the lump of clay is in the potter's hands. That's where we are this morning. You might not feel like that this morning. You might feel somewhere else entirely. But the reality of where we are is that we are in the hands of the potter this morning. And nothing can take us out of his hands. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be maybe comforted. I want you to be reassured. I want you to be certain this morning that as a Christian, that is where we are, okay? We are not anywhere else. We are in the potter's hands this morning. Okay. Now we are, of course, as this illustration says to us, we're not just in his hands passively, sitting there, or whatever clay does, in a potter's hands, because he has placed us on his wheel. So this morning, we are in the potter's hands, on the potter's wheel. And his hands are around us, on the wheel. And when a potter gets hold of clay on the wheel, and starts the wheel going, in the old days through pedalling away at it, now through switching on a motor, he starts to squeeze and to push, of course, as we saw in the video, the lump of clay. And if that lump of clay on the potter's wheel could have spoken, presumably the lump of clay would say things like, why do you keep throwing water at me? Why do you keep squeezing me? Why do you keep pushing me up and down and in and out. Why do you keep doing those things to me? Can't I get off the wheel, please, and have a rest as a lump of clay? But we know that as a lump of clay in the potter's hand, if we are going to be any use, if we are going to be made into something that God wants to make us into, He's got to do those things to us. We have got to feel his hands working us. He has got to take hold of us and shape us. We are not intended to remain as ugly lumps of clay. That is not why God saved us. On the potter's wheel, the purpose of the Clay being there is to be made into a pot. A useful and attractive pot. And so being in the hands of God this morning is for a purpose. Not just a, it's not just about it being a safe place. 
It's also a place where the potter works on our lives for a purpose. And that purpose, of course, is given to us in Romans chapter 8, verse 29. You know the verse, but let let me remind you. Romans 8, 29 says this. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. On the potter's wheel, God is shaping us to be like his Son. He is shaping us to be more like Jesus. He's not not thinking, oh, what can I do? I'll try this, and then this doesn't work, and I'll try that. His absolutely clear intention and plan for you and for me is that we become more like Jesus. That's why we're on the wheel. That's why he's got hold of us. That's why he's working at us. That's why he throws water on us. That's why he squeezes us. That's why pressure comes and we go this way and that way in order that we might be more like Jesus. That we be more like him. We're going to be finishing the service with a song that's got this line in. It says, you are the potter, I am the clay. Help me to be willing to let you have your way. Whether that way is a push and a tug and a pull and a twist and a squash and an up and a down, whatever it is, whatever kind of trial or challenge God has to apply to our lives, even a pandemic. All the time, his purpose is that he might be shaping us more like his son, the Lord Jesus. Now, there are two reasons why a pot does not turn out as it should when a pot is working at it. The first one is the one that I remember I could never, ever do. You get the clay, you you put it on the wheel, and you put it in the middle of the wheel, and then you start the wheel going, and what you find is, ooh, it starts to move around. Do you remember that, or was the only one who struggled with that? And of course, the moment it starts to move one way, you put it the other way, and it goes too far that way, and then it's this way, and then it's this way, and you... Personally, I could never get the thing still in the middle of the wheel while the wheel was going round. It was always having to go one way or the other. It wouldn't stay in the centre of the wheel. And if that is the, if you can't do that and get that right, you can't make a pot on a wheel. And that's one of the two big failings in our lives, isn't it? If we don't have our lives centred on God, if we don't have him as the centre of our lives, we're going to go, quite frankly, like the pot, all over the place. And we are not going to be shaped into what God wants us to, to be. We need to have him at the centre of our lives. It needs to be his will that we desire to do. It needs, our time needs to be centred on him. Our our plans need to be centred on him. Our relationships need to be centred on him. Every aspect of our lives needs to be centred on God in order that he can shape us to be like his son. So the first reason a pot does not come out successfully is because it doesn't centre on the wheel. And the second reason is there is a flaw within the clay. I think that's what you saw happening in the, in the video. Uh, wasn't it? He got hold of something there seemed to be a lump of, or something else emerged out of, the, out of the clay that couldn't actually be worked properly into what he was wanting to work in. 
because that piece just completely resisted the hands of the potter to be shaped as he wanted to make it. And tragically, there are things in our lives, aren't there, which amount to resist, absolute resistance against God shaping us to be what he wants to make us to be. Maybe we've got habits in our lives. We've got failings in our lives. We've got hurts in our lives which resist the work of God. Be that to really know forgiveness. Really to be that to know change. Be that to know determination to do the right thing. There are things in our lives which are flawed and they are an obstacle to us being shaped in the potter's hand as he wants it to be. Back in Jeremiah 18 verse 4, it says this, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. That's what happened here in what Jeremiah actually saw, the clay had resisted the work of the potter. What a tragedy that is. If we resist the work of God in our lives to shape us as he wants us to be, we're saying to God, oh God, I know better than you about the way I want to be. I don't want to be like you're shaping me, thank you God. I want to be something different. And like the pot that can't be shaped, we end up being, our lives end up being a bit of a mess, or a big mess, rather. But God, if we are like that with God, if we've been like that, and we've been resisting him shaping us as he wants us, then he does not cast us aside, because verse 4 goes on, so the potter formed it into another pot. The potter didn't throw the clay away, despite the marring. He started to work at another pot, uh, the same clay into another pot, into a different shape, but working it in a different way, dealing with whatever it was that was the marring within the clay and just reshaping it so that it was as he wanted it to be. And we have got a God who is infinitely patient with us, who will time, or he has with me, time and again, he's taken the lump that I am, and he's shaped me again and again and again into what he wants me to be. I expect each of us can just look back at our experience and say, yeah, that's what God's done with me too. I've been flawed and yet he's taken me still in his hands and he's worked me again into another pot. Into another pot. Shaping it, that verse ends, as it seemed best to him. Shaping it as it seemed best to him. God is making you and me into what is best to him. And that's the choice we have, isn't it, in life? Do we do our own thing? Do we go our own way? Do we pursue our own goals? Or do we let God work in our lives and cooperate with his work in our lives so that we are the best that God wants us to be? That's the choice we have in life. That's the choice. What should we do? His purpose, we saw from Romans 8, is that we might be like Jesus. I want to read a verse from Romans 9, which just adds to this as well, because uh, the writer of the Romans, in fact, talks about the potter and the clay. In Romans 9, 19, we read as follows. One of you will say to me, then, why does God still blame us? For who resists his will? But who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, why did you make me like this? 
Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for the noble purpose and some for common use? Oh, it's quite a few things we must take out here, isn't there? Firstly, we must never, ever look at another Christian and say, oh, I would prefer to be like them, God, than what I am. Why haven't you made me with a good singing voice, God? It's not fair. Or why can't I play a music instrument? Or why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Never do that, okay? It's at the potter's discretion... The guarantee we have from the potter is that if we allow him to work in our lives, he will make us into the best that he wants us to be. And what can be better to be the best that God wants us to be? Not the same as someone else, the best that God wants us to be. That's the best thing to be, is it? Indeed, as the writer says here, what right has the clay got to argue with the potter and say, hey, why are you making me like this? Why are you doing this in me? It's easy to do that, and I'm not saying there aren't moments, of course, and the Psalms are full of David crying out to God sometimes, saying, why this, why that, why the other? That's, that's a way of thinking through and working out these things, but we need to come to the point where we say, God, you are at work. I want the best for me, knowing that that's the best that you have and you will do your best in my life. And that's the best thing I can have. So let's not look back and say, oh, why didn't God do this differently and that differently? Blah, 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 blah. Hey, let's look forward and say, God, I want you to shape me into the best that you judge me to be. Let's not kick against his plans for our lives. One more verse to look at. 2 Corinthians verse four, uh, chapter 4 and verse 7. We read as follows. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. But we have this treasure, and this treasure is the gospel and the, life, uh, the, the, the life-changing power of God, and the good news, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. God wants to make us into something that will contain and show his all-surpassing power in a way that gives the glory not to us, but to him. So that people say, wow, what a God that person has. They're incredible, they're amazing. God's working in our lives is to be for God's glory, not for our own. Whatever shape he makes us, whatever size he makes us, however he decorates us, it's all to be for his praise and his glory. You and I are a lump of clay in the hands of the potter, not sitting there as decoration, but on a wheel that's going round. And we can't get off the wheel, even if you want to get off it. You can't get off it. It's going round. Life is happening and God is working, shaping our lives to be the best part that he wants us to be. And yet Jeremiah then had another most dire and serious warning given to him about pots in chapter 19. So while we're in a pots mood, let's turn to chapter 19. And notice the first few verses. Let me read from Jeremiah 19, verse 1. This is what the Lord says. And we don't know whether this was the next day or, or uh, it's just the next time God says to him something. Go, 
and buy a clay jar from a potter. This time, take along some of the elders of the people and of the priests and go out to the valley of Ben-Hinnon near the entrance to the potsherd gate. There proclaim the words I tell you and say, Hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and people of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Listen, I am going to bring a disaster on this place that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. For they have forsaken me and made this a place of foreign gods. They have burned sacrifices in it to gods that neither they nor their fathers nor the kings of Judah ever knew. And they have filled this place with the blood of the innocents. They have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire as offerings to Baal, something I did not command or mention, nor did it enter my mind. So beware, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer call this place Topeth or the valley of Ben-Hinnon, but the valley of slaughter. And verse 10, then break the jar while those who go with you are watching and say to them, this is what the Lord Almighty says, I will smash this nation and this city just as this potter's jar is smashed and cannot be repaired. The difference between the two pots, it's quite simple, wasn't it? In, in, in Jeremiah 18, it was a piece of clay. It was soft. It was being worked on the potter's wheel. In Jeremiah 19, this is a pot that has been fired and made hard. And what can you do with a pot that's hard and been fired if it's no use? Can you rework it? Can you reshape it? No. It's only, well, it has no use. It has no use. And Jeremiah is told, hey, go with the leaders of the people of Israel, smash the pot and say to them, you've become so hard. You've become so difficult. You've become so obstinate. You've rebelled so much against me. Your hearts are so hardened that it's like a fired pot and I cannot work you. You are not willing to be worked by me. And therefore, you are like a pot that must be smashed. And that is what is going to happen to you as a nation. And so the dire, dire warning in this verse, these verses, is of course quite clear, isn't it? It's a warning against becoming hard, having a hard heart. It's a warning against resisting God. It's a warning against constantly saying to God, no God, no God, no God, no God, no God. It's a warning against pursuing other things. It's a warning against putting other things where God should be in our life. It's a warning against persisting in sin. Because the tragedy is those things led the people of Israel down a path that for them was destruction and captivity for 70 years demonstrated by the smashing of that pot. So let's see the warning, beware the warning, and let's turn our hearts and minds to God again this morning as pieces of clay and say, hey God, I really do want you to work me, shape me, mold me, fill me, change me, make me more like your son. Lord, I'm not going to argue with you about who you want me to be because your plan is best for me. What you want for me is the very best that there can be. Let's pray. Our Father, this morning, we thank you for this challenging picture which you... Uh, or, or experience, Lord, which you gave to Jeremiah as he went and saw the potter at work. And Lord, we thank you that you are the great potter this morning. We thank you. 
I thank you that I am in your hands this morning. And I thank you for my brothers and sisters here this morning, that, that each one of them is in your hands. And nothing, nothing, nothing can snatch them out of your hands. But Lord, you have not called us to sit there inactively as a lump. But Lord, you've placed us on your wheel and you are working us and shaping us and you want us to be more like Jesus. And that, Lord, is the work you want to do in our lives even this week. Through the things we have no idea, Lord, which will what will happen to us this week. But, Lord, your plan will be that all those things, in all those things, you will shape us to be more like Jesus. And so, Lord, we humbly pray. Lord, we want to be centred on you. We want to be moulded by you. Lord, we don't want to resist you. We want to be pliable in your hands that you may make us who you want us to be. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we want to be someone different and resist you. Lord, this morning we say to you, mould us, mould us, Lord, into what you want us to be. And then fill us anew with your spirit. Lord, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.